Hello, my name is Opal Singleton. I am the president and CEO of Million Kids. Please follow us on all of our social media. This is a Million Kids Insider Alert. We bring these to you once you sign up for them at millionkids.org. We bring these to you so that you can see new cases, get case analysis, which is what this one is. We look at new technologies and we also explore legislative activity that will impact on child sex crimes. Well, this is the case of Michael Stephen Autry. He was 42 years old from Brownwood, Texas. He was sentenced to 12 years in prison for child pornography. He was in fact the administrator of a child pornography ring that he called Taboo Train 2.0. Now this one I wanted to bring to you because it's kind of different than a lot of child pornography rings that we see. And I wanted to bring that to your attention. You see these take place in the dark web or bulletproof hosting, but this one is taking place on the Kick messaging app. And a lot of times people think those apps are a lot more private than they are. In fact, you're seeing a movement across the nations all around the world for app companies, including Kick, to run algorithms on the, pla on the content on their platform. And if they see child pornography, to be sure and report it. In this case, the federal prosecutors said when they gave a news release that he wrote that the group was meant for members. Keep in mind, this is a membership. They're probably paying a fee or they're enrolling anyway to share pics and videos of all things taboo. So if you're part of this ring, you pretty well know what you're getting into. He encouraged incest, young and your own family members to discuss taboo fantasies and real life stories. What he didn't know was an FBI undercover agent was invited to join the group. Now, I just want to take a minute out and, and applaud whoever this is. We won't know because they are undercover. But thank you. Thank you to the FBI. They're taking a real beating right now. I don't know if it's deserved or not. I don't really care. But there is a world full of FBI agents out there that put their lives on the line to protect us and our families, and especially our youngest kids that are the most vulnerable. And here's one of them. It is not easy to work in child sex crimes. You see way too much stuff. And in this case, he was penetrating a child uh, pornography ring. So he would have seen this stuff. And he was able to communicate, record the communications and postings and identified many of the group members. The group had more than 50 members, many of them living outside the US, but many of them also right here in the US. But most didn't post photos or videos, according to the prosecutor. So I just want to share with you that this is a bit of an anomaly. When we think of most child pornography rings, they're large scale. These pedophiles go out, they, they send out kind of uh, cryptic messages so that you know that uh, this is someone that shares your kind of fetishes. And they will form these large scale rings and the rings have administrators. That's what our uh, person here, our perpetrator was in this case, he was an administrator. One of the things that we're seeing currently, and I'm not saying that took place in this case, but one of the things we're seeing currently is that you're required to violate a child regularly and photograph that, film that with yourself in the act. They're doing that to try to verify that you're not in fact uh, law enforcement. In this case, law enforcement had penetrated the ring without their knowledge. So what will often happen is this takes place in the dark web. Now this case, case situation took place in the surface web. If you think of the internet as a bucket of water, the top 4% is where most of us operate. OK, we have Google, we have Chrome, we have Bing, we have search engines. It's fairly open in the communication. We can find each other. Below that is the deep web. And that's where big corporations, your banks and, and the government stores all that cryptic data that goes in there. Below that is the dark web. And the dark web is vast. And it has some uh, good uses, but it has a lot of real questionable uses too. Now you can't just go from the surface web to the dark web. You need a special browser. So if, if you have a kid telling you, oh, I just accidentally got in the dark web. No, they didn't. 
It takes serious preparation to do that. Uh, most people use something called TOR, the onion router, T-O-R. And you'll know that they're using a dark web account if they're using a dot onion router in that kind of case. And so just to give you an idea of how this works, last year uh, was discovered, I believe it was Homeland Security, FBI, I can't remember, the largest child pornography ring that they had discovered to date, to give you an idea how big this was. Now, this is a paid subscription. You paid about $200 every six months to be part of it, usually with a Bitcoin account. In this case, they had over a million users. Think about that. If your child gets uh, sextorted, some pedophile lures your child in and they send a naked photo off to that that uh, guy that they think is a 16 year old gorgeous hunk or a 14 year old hot babe, that photo will go to over a million people just like that. If your child's naked photo ends up in one of these child pornography rings, it can be sent and resent and viewed around the world. So most of this is taking place in the dark web. However, law enforcement is getting pretty good at penetrating these child pornography rings, as we saw right here with the FBI. And so what you're seeing is the lights come on and the cockroaches scatter. These child pornography rings are leaving the dark web and going out into bulletproof hosting. Now, what is that for Pete's sake? Well, basically it is offshore hosting that's totally anonymous, if you will. They hide the domain name, they hide the IP address, they put the server in a country like China or Russia or Iceland or Romania or Belize or some country where they don't ask any questions about what the content is that you're broadcasting and makes it almost impossible to be able to find out who actually owns the equipment and has formed this ring. So because of that, what is happening is it's getting harder and harder to find these guys. But this one was fairly straightforward because they were operating in the clear web, that surface web on Kick Messenger. And uh, they thought that it was encrypted. Most likely they thought they were protected. So they catered to people with fetishes. Within a few weeks, the group's members showed more sexual interest in boys than girls. Quite frankly, that is not all that uncommon in these child pornography rings, it's sad to say. So he created a new group called the Common Interest. Uh, the undercover FBI agent, uh, they didn't know who he was, so he was invited to join in to the specialized fetish group. In an introductory message, uh, Autry said the group was meant for taboo images, specifically incest, teens, and taboo relationships. Uh, the Taboo Train 2.0 on Kick Messenger app, according to this news release, this is where I get my information is from public data most of the time. In November, December 2017, he added two more groups. So he thinks he's really being protected and he's on a roll. He is administrating large scale rings. And he did this on Kick, where members were invited to share photos and videos of children being sexually abused. He also invited the undercover agent in without realizing it. A comment here by the U.S. Attorney's Office, and I appreciate what he's saying. It shocks the conscience when someone finds pleasure in looking at photos and videos of children being sexually abused. And I'd like to add in there, they're not all small children, toddlers. Sometimes these are our teenagers who fall in love online. They, they send that naked photo and they are trapped just like that. That is the reason why we're getting ready to release a movie about sextortion. It's even more disturbing when someone like Audrey gathers men together in online groups for the purpose of sharing these horrific images. By the way, they're not always men. They're mostly men, but there are women child pornographers. So there are 11 other people charged in this child pornography ring connected to this group program. The charge is that they did knowingly make, print, and publish a notice or advertisement offering to exchange, display, and distribute child pornography. 
I want you to get that. Sometimes the, the image is sold. Sometimes it's traded for other images. Sometimes they're just contributing. But this is the reason why you have so many sextortion groups out there that are trying to seduce our children into sending naked photo. It's so these child pornographers can take that photo and put it out on a child pornography ring, which can be bought, sold, and traded all around the world. He allegedly posted links, videos, and links in a private group uh, chat that led others to chat to access child pornography uh, and maintaining in the internet user account. He allegedly made these postings after he invited them into the online chat room called The Common Interest. Now, here are some of the other names of the people that are being charged. I add this because I want you to notice, first of all, there's a whole mix of nationality in the names there. We don't have the images of the people, but it's everything. It's Caucasian. It is Hispanic. Uh, it is even Vietnamese name on there. And so this can, uh, in these large scale rings can be people of any age, of any nationality, mostly men. And I find that it's uh, aging from you know 21 all the way up to 81 in uh, the age of the perpetrator. So if you have anyone in your life that is being sextorted or is being contacted and they're trying to get a naked photo or illicit photo out of a minor, be sure and contact your local police department and ask for the cyber crimes sextortion specialist. And if you know anyone who is connected to a child pornography ring or any, especially anyone connected to this case, or anyone who is violating a minor or is a victim of child sex crimes, you can report this at the national hotline. You can even report it anonymously if you want to. This has been a Million Kids Insider Alert. Please follow us on all of our social media. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you could go on to Million Kids Organization, millionkids.org, and donate so that we can keep this service going to you to educate the public and, and help intervene in these cases. If you know of something you want to chat about, you can reach me at opal, O-P-A-L, at meandkids.org. Well, we'll see you next time on Million Kids Insider Alert. <music>